All right, so good morning here from India. Uh, I am Dr. Gora and I am um, based in uh, Mumbai. I am a homeopathic physician. So I am here to talk to you today about a few remedies and uh, how I understand uh, homeopathic remedies. So let's start uh, from a very very interesting case. So this is a case of eczema and angioneurotic edema in a 30 year old female and when I saw her first time and you can see a little bit here her face was totally swollen up and she wasn't even able to open her eyes you can see here entire face it was totally swollen and she was trying to take antihistaminics but it was not helping There was just increase in swelling all over the face, the swelling in the lips, the swelling in the upper eye. And this is where she came to see me. See? Alright. So, what are the symptoms? There was a lot of eruption on the faces, angioneurotic edema in the lips, lot of itching. She would complain of a lot of itching itching, redness, a lot of burning, burning all over the body. The only thing that would make her feel better was taking bath by cold water and she couldn't stop itching, 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 itching all over the body. She would say that she would need to uncover her clothes, she would have to remove her clothes because the itching was so much it would make her terrible, terrible. She would say, I am going crazy over itching. Itching is making me mad. She would say, I am ready to do anything. And no allopathic medicines were helping. She would get very impatient. She would keep calling me up that, Doctor, when can I come and see you? Doctor, this is itching. Doctor, when can I come and see you? She couldn't tolerate heat at all. Not much of sweat. Her thirst is very less. Sleep also would be very, very restless. State of mind. Now, this is very interesting. I asked her, can you tell me about yourself? And in homeopathic case taking, I give a lot of importance not only to physical symptoms and chief complaints and modalities, but also to what is the state during the chief complaint. This is very important. So, she says that I need to do something all the time. I can't be just sitting like this. I have to be restless. If I'm sitting with a hand, I will keep doing something. I have to constantly keep doing something. I can't sit idle. I go and ask my boss in my work, give me work, doc. Give me work. I need to keep doing something. She says, I need to be busy. My hand needs to keep doing something. If nothing, I have to keep walking. I have to do something. She describes herself as someone who is very, very emotional. She feels like crying on smallest of things, constantly crying. When she would cry, nothing would help her during that time. She would get very, very emotional and very, very sensitive also. She said, I am very worried. Will this become into some very big illness? Will it be cancer? Will it be some heart complaint? Will it be some skin cancer? Very, very scared. What dreams do you get? She said, I get many scary dreams, but I don't remember. I said, okay. What do you feel like doing? She said, I only feel like doing something all the time. I said, like what? She said, I, like, I feel like just going out and running, running, running. I can't sit idle. I need to keep doing something. I either need to run, I need to jog, I need to work. I need to be active, doctor. Something of activity. So this is the case, Insha. So it is. It is more of an acute case. And uh, yes, in my clinic in Mumbai, um, uh, is a different setup. I see about fifty patients a day, and. Um, 
all types of cases come to me right from like you can see here acute urticaria eczema to cases of cancer very often i get very less time to prescribe sometimes less than half an hour in some acute cases i get 15 minutes to prescribe because the patient is often in a hurry so how to analyze this case let's try to understand now how i understand this case is as follows after taking this case I try to form the portrait of the disease. What do you mean by portrait of the disease? Hanneman has spoken about this in the Organon aphorisms. I hope you do, all of you do read Organon. One of my favorite, favorite author, Adolf von Lippi, said once in his writings that in your early practice, read Organon twice. And once you are busy, read it once, at least once a year and twice in a year when you are just starting your practice. So, uh, I, I gave a lot of importance to what Lippi has said. So, let's see what is the portrait of the disease. The portrait of the disease in this case is a very generalized eruptions. Red, itchy, swelling, edema. Better by cold. Aggravated by covering, allergies, everything happens sudden. By state of mind, she is very, very active, wants to do something all the time. Fidgety. This is what you can say is the portrait of the disease. Now, if I want to put all this into a repertory, and in Mumbai, I'm known as the person, a repertory person, because I use different, different types of repertories. And uh, as you already know, there are different, different types of repertory in homeopathy, like Bonning Hosen repertory, Kent repertory, Fatak repertory, Complete repertory, Boric repertory, Nair repertory. And hopefully at some point, I will uh, teach you about different types of repertories. So now how to take this into a repertory? Now when you see this, these are all general symptoms. These are not particular symptoms. And when I see general symptoms, an acute case, the repertory I use is a repertory called as Fatak repertory. So I use Fatak repertory and I put all this into a repertory. And because this is a talk more about generalized materia medica, I am not going to take much time and explain you. So when I put this in the repertory and you can see this, some of you can see this in, in, the, in the repertory sheet, you can see the first rubric I took is a lot of anticipation. This will happen, cancer will happen. The next rubric which I took which is a, a peculiar symptom you can see is, is activity, constantly wanted it to be active, sometimes fruitlessly active <laughs> without doing anything. The next symptom is better by cold water, burning, lot of burning you can see. Itching, angioneurotic edema, urticaria, constant weeping and covering aggravates. So when you put all of this, you can see the top remedy, super top remedy to be Apis Mellifica. And when you study Apis Mellifica, and once you always study the repertory, one should always study the Materia Medica. And when you study Materia Medica, and let's see Materia Medica, Apis Mellifica from Fatak Materia Medica. And you can see how it's written. The well effects, well known effects of bee sting is burning, stinging, smarting, prickling, lancinating pain with excessive swelling are the leading symptoms for selection of the remedy. It specially acts on the cellular tissue, especially eyes, face, throat, ovaries, causing edema of the skin and mucous membrane. Various parts are swollen, puffed, become edematous, shiny, red, rosy color. The burning is like hot needles. Symptoms appear rapidly. So you can see this is the whole genius of the case. And if you study the mind symptoms, the first very, very peculiar and the fastest symptom you can see, fruitless activity and general tearfulness. You can see this in the, this is how you have to study. 
step by step so i gave i gave the remedy apis mellifica in 30 potency and as it is a acute case and you know her she was in a very bad situation actually i gave apis 30 i gave once a day for 10 days and i asked her let us follow up after 10 days and let's see what happened after 10 days so after 10 days of apis 30 her totally her skin covered up she improved dramatically have a look here it was almost as if she her skin had totally cleared up her urticaria her redness her itching all had reduced in fact in the first two doses only this is the beauty of homeopathy and the kind of results we have with homeopathy is remarkable homeopathy based on very set principles peculiar individual hanuman spoke about striking uncommon peculiar sign and symptoms and that's what we try to do and all of us so <clears throat> now we see this very very interesting case and we gave apis now what i want to share with you is now how do we study apis mellifica as a remedy further let's try to see this and you can see this is apis mellifica and um, now i want to teach you and share with you how i study homeopathic materia medica step by step from the old classical from hanumanian time to today's time to dr sankaran's time so i try to go from the olden classics to the current conventional so the first proving was done by dr humphrey from new york interestingly and what he did was he put the live bees in a bottle and he would he did it with a live bees by the way and irritated by shaking upon them five times and the whole this was allowed to remain for 8 days and this tincture now is used as apis mellifica for homeopathic student is very important to know which part is used now i am going to introduce to you step by step about different authors in homeopathy and what they spoke about this remedy and how to understand a drug picture so we can see now this is written by ml tyler ml tyler was one of the most fascinating of authors in homeopathy based in england and um, her materia medica i would say and i have this in front of me interestingly i i read it every night this is the book to read if you want to study homeopathy and she she has spoken a lot about uh, different different authors and what they speak and one of the very peculiar thing about apis is that and this also kent has also written about this that suppose you have a newborn child and uh, keeps getting convulsions one after the other one after the other one after the other especially after taking bath by hot water think of apis mellifica gonsi says that pains of apis is like bee stings like thrust sudden nash one of the another very very great homeopath again this book that i read of nash you can see this is a book all of you should read leaders of homeopathic therapeutics eb nash he also was based in new york and was one of the america's leading practitioner in 19th century from cleveland homeopathic medical college 1874 fantastic homeopath and i read all his literature this small book and you should be reading it lane gentleman he says there are any type of fevers where there is alternation of dry heat and sweating think of apis burnet says in very very bad cases of hemorrhoids one should think about apis nm choudhury indian author and nm choudhury is the author from whom george withulkas learned himself so he is you can say authority in uh, materia medica here yes. and he says that in cases of fever where especially cerebral fevers after suppressed eruptions think about apis mellifica and one of the main main generalities of apis is thirstlessness 
another very very important thing about apis mellifica is its action on the female genital tract the main symptom on which i have prescribed it very often is that apis mellifica have very very high sexual desire and especially high sexual desire in widows or in old women is a very very peculiar symptom of apis it's also a very important remedy for abortion especially in the third month pregnancy apis is often inimical to rustox clark ka clark gives a lot of importance to soreness and he writes every hair is painful to contact which which means he says aggravated by slightest touch this is clark materia medica fantastic uh, homeopathic book this clark was based in england and his dictionary of practical materia medica which comes in three volumes is an amazing amazing literature and you should be reading it i have this entire library of my own with all the homeopathic literature sometime when you come to india you should come and visit me all right so clark gives a lot of sen- uh, importance to sensitivity to contact also apis mellifica has a special action on dropsical condition and especially for cardiac dropsy renal dropsy the keynote of dropsiness is the swelling under the eyelid they they will always have a bag here like this and they will always have thirstlessness let's see what fatak has said fatak again has said it is a very important remedy and the generalities of fatak can be very very important he writes that it has an action on serous membrane of the heart the parts are swollen up puffed up especially in cases of hydrocephalus and meningitis there are sudden shrills and one half of the body could be twitching and another part could be paralyzed apis could often be a right sided remedy and especially for ill effects of grief fright rage jealousy even bad news mental shock you know one might think of remedy like ignatia but apis also has a state of mind of mental shock like ignatia the only difference is they are very very hurried and they have a insect energy which i will talk to you about mind they the one of the main symptoms of apis is very strong jealousy they could be very very fussy and very hard to please it would be very very difficult to please a apis woman there is also element of childish silliness foolishness high sexuality and suspicion i often call apis as a smaller sister of lachesis it's a very important remedy for respiratory condition so especially for hydrothorax very important remedy. and like i spoke to you it is a very important remedy for cancer of mammae and also for cancer of ovary if you are treating cases of female complaints ovarian cancer breast cancer apis is a very important remedy and i use it rampant here also very important for erysipelas reddish skin and one of the very important thing is it is very sudden this this red skin now let us try to understand and i am going to teach you how to study mind rubrics and what are the main rubrics of apis let's see the main rubrics of apis is fruitlessly busy and especially you can see busy young girls in amenorrhea doing nothing right especially in busy 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 restless girls this is a very important remedy they constantly want to keep on doing something their occupation their diversion and they need a constant diversion of mind it's a very fast paced remedy even in their mind there is something going on like coffee accruda dreams of business dreams of occupation dreams of being busy 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 they always see busy be interesting dreams of journeys a lot of journeys traveling going somewhere 
by railroad by space by flight constant dreams of traveling especially dreams that they are doing something very laborious very hard working apes are very very hard working people another very important symptom of apes is they are always hurried and from being hurried they can be very, very awkward they are taking something and they will just drop it they drop things very easily there is a lot is lot of awkwardness in this apes they are also very foolish at time they will laugh at the wrong timing once they start laughing they can't stop they will say something and <laughs> start laughing i had a interesting case once of again of allergy uh, many years back about 5 years back and this lady and i would ask her every time what increases your itching what makes the itching more what is less and every time i would ask question she would say something and they, she would start laughing in a very stupid way and she would start laughing continue laughing for a very long time and she improved a lot with apis mellifica so you can see laughing at every word said laughing at his own action laughing immoderately laughing silly this is the way to understand the remedy through materia medica through authors through rubrics and later on i will also show you how to understand sensation step by step they have a lot of liveliness within themselves liveliness very active and especially they they have this mirth hilarity even when feels wretched even when they are down even when they are low they will kind of just have a mirth some kind of liveliness within themselves they can often due to awkwardness just break things it is not the violence of tuberculinum where they take and they throw it is not the deceit of tarantula it is the awkwardness and hurriness of apes they are very very cheerful dancing laughing singing there is eccentricity to them which is quite different to carcinosin carcinosin also dancing laughing singing but there is a rhythmicity to carcinosin another stage of apis which i have seen is that they will always try to show as if they are okay like opium well says when he is sick uh, there is a kind of stage where they will say no i am okay i have no problems no i am okay they are very practical they do not show their emotions they could often be very very obstinate they will say i have no problem obstinate declares there is nothing wrong the other thing other theme that i have seen through apis is the theme of dirtiness so you can see dreams road dirty dreams of dirtiness dreams of stool these all show a theme of dirtiness they they, they have a internal feeling of dirty like lac canino the only difference between lac canino and apis is that for lac canino there the survival mechanism of is you versus me is more of a face to face is more of trying to please others if trying to be accepted in a group while apis is the head of the group she feels she is the dominating character she is the queen it is hard to please her it is quite opposite to that of lacanine and here i want to show you one video of of apis let's have a look Thank you.
so you could see here a very very interesting video of uh, the bees and you can again see one of the very interesting thing you must have seen is the amount they are busy constantly doing something the hives that's why you call it bee hives so this was one remedy i wanted to uh, discuss with you about apis now we study another remedy we study the remedy cocos cacti and uh, cocos cacti is a pocinel insect it's a native of mexico as well as in spain and java and it was proved by dr vastel and other austrian provers and interestingly in this remedy the dried insect was used now let's try to understand this remedy one of the authorities in understanding uh, this remedy is clark john henry clark and he was based in england like i told you he compares cantharis with cocos cacti and especially on the renal area because cocos cacti has a specific action causing hemorrhages and it also has a lot of constricting sensation also there is a lot of importance that clark has given for whooping cough like drosera like cuprum metallicum like mephitis and the peculiarity he says is that the cough is worse in the morning when the child awakens and is immediately seized with a paroxysm of cough ending in vomiting cocos cacti is a very very important remedy in homeopathy and especially for for doctors who are seeing a lot of pediatric patients children with cough and when they get up with cough there is a ropey mucus like kali bai think about cocos cacti and you can see in farrington it is written there is a clear ropey mucus hanging in long string so when you go and see this child who is coughing and the string of mucus just comes out like this in cocos cacti there is a lot of depression lot of sadness but one of the main thing is there is especially when they get up in the morning you know they get up in the morning and they feel depressed oh i don't feel like doing anything i feel depressed so sadness waking on sadness morning 2 am 3 am 4 am all this the main remedy is cocos cacti it is a very important remedy which forms clots very rapidly and the vagina can become packed with clots uterine hemorrhage is a very important phenomena of cocos cacti copious prolonged menstrual flow and especially black clots think of this remedy in generalities in fatak and this is one of the main materia medica diary it's written it affects the mucous membrane causing catarrhal condition and especially irritation of the throat the discharges are stringy it is a very important remedy for uric acid diathesis <laughs> like benzoic acid but in benzoic acid the urine is very offensive uric acid diathesis is also seen in lycopodium but lycopodium always the uric acid is connected to digestion uric acid diathesis is also seen in urtica urens but in urtica urens there is a lot of urtic area along with the uric acid diathesis so like that you have to compare and differentiate the remedies this is what i have learned from all my gurus from dr sankaran from dr sarkar from dr lm khan i have learned from about more than 20 different gurus in homeopathy in india it is remarkable the kind of culture and knowledge we have in homeopathy the main symptom of cocos cacti is that they feel very very depressed especially on waking another very important symptom of cocos cacti is regular paroxysm so the cough is not <coughs> it is <coughs> in paroxysm which remedy has a single cough like this <coughs> <coughs> that is coralium rubrum while cocos cacti has a cough like this 
<laughs> many paradoxes and especially cough in alcoholics in 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 patients who are too much into alcohol and they develop cough remember the remedy cocus tecum it's a remarkable remedy and also very important remedy for clots when they actually get obstructed in the vagina and they cannot pass urine it's also very important remedy for urine infection interesting so this is the way you have to study step by step let's study another remedy and one of the most interesting remedies in homeopathy we have and we will study about drosera drosera is a carnivorous plant the common name is sundew and it is one of the remedies which has been proved by hanemann and this is very important to see who has proved which remedy and in the preparation of this remedy the entire fresh plant is gathered at the commencement of flowering it is chopped pounded and the entire area is used now let's try to understand about drosera the plant ml tyler one of my favorite authors she has written dramatically she has written a few years ago i came to a startling conclusion starting conclusion that only two people who really knew anything about drosera were samuel hanneman and myself and she says i have had it in my mind ever since that i would like to communicate such a knowledge as i possess to my colleagues the world over i can only hope that i may be enable to add something very real to our power of fighting formidable disease tuberculosis so look at the way ml tyler has written this it's amazing isn't it she says that drosera is a remedy which is very important especially in cases of tuberculosis and especially in tuberculosis of bones and tuberculosis of joints and tuberculosis of glands it's also very important remedy for osteomyelitis she says i began to realize what drosera can do in tuberculous disease of bones of joints of glands i was amazed and i started hunting homeopathic literature for my warrant in using it kent knew it not clark knew it not but so far as bone and joints were concerned i found my justification in black type in provings of hanneman black type is if if you are going to go back home and read my favorite book ml tyler if you are going to read that then you will find in every remedy a uh, area written black letter symptom and these are direct proving symptoms of hanneman and you should be reading this book fantastic book <laughs> let us study further what drosera has been told dr curi proved the homeopathy of of drosera to tuberculosis and almost was found that drosera can actually cure tuberculosis and in india we have done a research in in um, in tuberculosis and remarkable results and she also chose cats you know curie experimented on cats um and she saw that cats we were given tuberculosis who had tuberculosis at least liable to tuberculosis drosera was very useful let's try to understand the homeopathic area about drosera drosera can increase the immune system especially in cases of tubercular miasma especially when patients are very very restless very tubercular especially in cases of laryngeal phthisis which means tuberculosis of the larynx especially of phthisis pulmonum which means the tuberculosis of the lungs and hip joint tuberculosis so there is a lot of tubercular so drosera will be very very restless people you know what is a peculiar symptom of uh, drosera given by hanneman let's try to see drosera from chronic disease let's see or hanneman materia medica pura 
I am going to show you how to read Matira Medica Pura. No one in homeopathy will show you this. And if you read this, and let's see this from Matira Medica Pura, and I read a lot of Matira Medica Pura. Let's see. See what is written. This is very important symptom of Drothera. Restlessness when reading. Could not stick long to one subject. He must always go to something else. And I know you all must be laughing. Oh, this is my symptom. But this is the main, main symptom. See, this is written in capitals by Hanuman himself from the Matira Medica Pura. This is the main symptom of Drosera. Another symptom Hanuman has written about is all day long there is a lot of disposition and anxiety full of mistrust and then the symptom he imagines he is being deceived by spiteful envious people so interesting our Matira Medica is and I want to tell you you should read Matira Medica Pura it's a remarkable in Allen's keynotes it is given often as a complimentary to Nasconica. But Hanuman writes in Matira Medica Pura, one single dose of 30 potency is sufficient to cure entire epidemic of whooping cough. The cure takes place between 7 and 8 days. So interesting how Hanuman has written. In Fatak, in Drosera it's written, it affects the respiratory organs causing spasms, hemorrhages. It's a very hemorrhagic and spasmodic remedy like Cupra Metallica. <laughs> easily angered. Drosera can be easily angered like Naxomic. Beside himself like Naxomic. Inclination to drown himself. Very, very restless. Fear of being alone and very suspicious. Delusion of being persecuted. Very restless. Anxiety when alone. In the respiratory sphere, in Drosera, there is a very deep cough. The very important thing about Drosera, they are very deep. So the cough is... <coughs> it's very deep. And often they say it comes from the abdomen. It's very important where cough comes from. Cough comes from the throat, rumex, spongia. Cough comes from the chest, antimony Cough comes from abdomen, deep, rosera. This is very important to know the origin of the cough. I am showing you clinical materia medica. This is the real homeopathy. This is the way we analyze. Bloody purulent expectoration. Cough worse singing and talking. Very interestingly, they have written harassing cough. Stitching pain in the chest when cough. NM Chaudhary has written very, very nicely that this remedy has an action on pneumogastric. And like Cocos, this has a lot of paroxysm of cough where the patient coughs 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 and then vomits so it's like this i will show you the drosera cough the way they cough they will <coughs> so they will cough 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 and then they will vomit this is the way the drosera patient vomits I would like to share with you from my guru, Dr. Sarkar, and what he taught to me about Drosera. He said that Drosera has tuberculinum like pace and has fears like belladonna. And he gives Drosera as a very important remedy for ADHD, for children who have attention deficit hyperactive disorder, and also in cases of autism, he found Drosera very important. And especially one of the very important things he found is not just restlessness, but even a very important 
craving for meat he found that with a strong history and especially family history of tuberculosis drosera is a very important remedy <laughs> drosera can have lot of fear of dark and can often have craving for sour things this is a very important aspect of drosera now let us try to understand the mechanism of drosera and what actually happens in drosera let's have a look so you could see her very beautifully in this video if you see very closely how first the insect is attracted towards this plant and then once it's attracted and once it's enticed into it how slowly and steadily the tentacles of the carnivorous plant you can see how this this kind of after this attraction of the sticky fluid how it actually traps beautifully traps the insect and then how it crushes and this is the main feeling of drosera the main rubric of drosera in repertory is trapped one of the patient who i treated with drosera would often tell me that i was cheated i was cheated very badly by my father he treated me like a enemy he trapped me just because i was his son so this feeling of trapped and then often they would often say i feel suffocated is a very important phenomenon of drosera and there is a strong feeling i want to tell you it's very important in drosera this strong feeling of being deceived of feeling cheated of being surrounded by enemy they see everyone as enemy everyone around is an enemy this is the way they think that everyone around has cheated me has trapped me they suffocated me this is the way they perceive and this is also a very important sensation of carnivorous plant and i will maybe at some other point teach you about carnivorous plant even in the dreams of drosera there's a lot of feeling of being ill treated maltreated insulted disappointed deceived trapped so this is the main main idea of drosera which i wanted to share with you and it's a remarkable remedy which i have used in in my practice with this feeling of trap and being suffocated and deceived cheated so this is what i wanted to share with you about drosera let's go to the next 